Hey there guys, it's Aiden. So if you're an Last of Us fan like me, then tonight has been a pretty special night. Of course, we had the Summer Games Fest hosted by Jeff Keighley, which is your sort of E3 but not E3 replacement. But regardless, it was showing a bunch of different games, some trailers, some gameplay, yada yada yada. But of course, the game, the whole thing was rounded off by The Last of Us Part 1, a remake for The Last of Us. Spoiled a little bit by the fact that it was actually leaked just you know, hours prior to the, the event, and uh, but it's a lot of different information we're getting tonight on not just The Last of Us remake, but also The Last of Us television show and The Last of Us standalone multiplayer project. Of course, Factions 2, you know I've been going on about that for a while. I am incredibly excited about this one. But anyway, we're going to have a bit of a breakdown on some of the information that we got tonight, some of the things that we maybe think or guess on, on it, and take it from there. So of course let's start with part 1. This is a fully rebuilt for PS5 game. It's We got a look at it, you'll be looking at it right now with the gameplay trailer. This is a massive step up. It's really bringing it in line with part 2 and its cutscenes. You might, you know, there'll be a lot of people out there saying that it isn't that much better. I really highly disagree. Of course one of the biggest differences between this version and the old version is that all the cutscenes were pre-rendered, whereas this is in-game cutscenes. So everything is a lot more dynamic. Of course, you look at the eyes. I've really got a lot of life in them. The motion of the, the faces is so much better. And that was done by the animators taking a look at the old footage of the performances and matching that even better than they could have back then. So that means that this game wasn't actually completely refilmed or anything like that. Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson didn't need to go back and refilm all of their scenes. They just took what they had already from the motion capture from the footage and made it a better experience from that. But of course, one of the biggest, like most exciting parts of this is something that we didn't even see at all. And that's that it's going to implement modernized gameplay, improved controls and expanded accessibility. A lot of the things that really worked well for part two back in 2020. So that really does mean though that The Last of Us Part 1 Remake isn't you know, it's not off to a great start and convincing those that maybe were on the fence or maybe weren't all that fussed about it. I think when you see this game in action, that's going to be the thing that makes the difference. When you see the controller in hand gameplay, it's going to completely change minds here and I cannot wait to see it. Of course, we're getting a lot of like the PS5 hardware functionalities. We're getting the 3D audio, we're getting haptics, we're getting adaptive triggers. So that's a lot of additional little immersive qualities to the game that just weren't possible before so this is you know the great thing is we don't even have to wait that long which is partly disappointing because it means i was wrong in the video that i made a little while back you can go and check that out if you want but also september 2nd really not that far away just a little bit after the ninth anniversary of this game so of course you can really let me know whether you think this is a worthy remake nine years isn't a long time when we talk about the typical remake schedule and of course this is the third time this game has been released but I think it's really worthy I think this looks like a great new way to experience the game and I have completed that game like seven or eight times by this point I'm picking this up day one but moving onwards we have a bit of a preview a little screenshot of The Last of Us on HBO it, of course it's the big television show they've been filming it for a year at this point it's coming to HBO it's in collaboration with PlayStation Studios, with Naughty Dog as well. Neil Druckmann himself even directed one of the episodes. You have Craig Mazin on board as a writer and a director. And this guy was the writer-director for Chernobyl, which is a fantastic TV show, if you haven't checked that out already. A nice little thing to look out for when the show does finally air is that we got confirmation that both Ashley Johnson and Troy Baker will show up in the show in a cameo part. They've already filmed their scenes and I'm going to imagine they'll show up as bandits or camp survivors, something along those lines. Just a little throwaway or blink and you miss it kind of cameo that will be good for all of the fans of the video game. Now we got our first little look. Some of you may recognise it. We have Joel and Ellie played by Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey hiding behind some sort of counter with what looks like out of focus a couple of clickers there. But this really does look like the American museum that we saw pretty early on in the game. No spoilers here I suppose if you haven't watched or played the game, whatever. Pretty big scene. 
is about to come out right after that, so that's pretty exciting. However, we also found out that The Last of Us is wrapping up filming finally after such a long time tomorrow, which in this case is going to be the 10th of June 2022. And that's pretty exciting because we're finishing up, ra wrapping up filming on this, on production, on this whole thing after such a long time, halfway through the year. Of course, we all thought it was coming in 2023, but Neil Druckmann really kind of hinted that it would be coming a lot sooner than that. Of course, no confirmations as of yet, but it looks like we could have The Last of Us at least starting on HBO before the new year. But you guys all know why I'm here. The thing that I'm really excited about, and that was our first proper update on The Last of Us standalone multiplayer project, which was announced over two years ago, two and a half years ago actually, and then just delayed because they wanted it to be a standalone thing. It was becoming too ambitious. We've heard a lot of rumors since on a lot of internal drama in terms of them having to reshape what kind of experience it was going to be. But now we're getting our first proper look. Well, I say first proper look, it's really just a bit of concept to heart, but I think there's a lot to take from it. Of course, you see a couple of characters standing on a bridge here with the typical Last of Us attire. You've got Molotov and a bow and arrow and the guy on the right, and then a machete and a sniper rifle on the left. But down below, you can see some other characters. We've got some environmental elements coming into it maybe you know a little bit like battlefield 2042 of course this is set in san francisco with the golden gate bridge off in the distance they're saying this is going to be a big standalone thing and i'm wondering then how big this setting's going to be there's rumors going about that this could be sort of like escape from tarkov which is a a, a sort of battle royale concept i think that suits perfectly for the last of us to be honest i'm really really excited to see that in terms of the time when we can expect it, Neil Druckmann didn't really give us any other details other than this, but he did say that we would be expecting to hear more in 2023. Hopefully that more is just a release date. So <laughs> that one can but dream. A little just additional thing that we heard was that Neil Druckmann actually is working on something else. We don't know if it's a brand new IP, could be another Uncharted game, could be another Last of Us game. We don't really know yet, but the, he said he wasn't going to say anything else in the matter, but he was directing something new for Naughty Dog. So all in all, it's a very, very exciting time. We've obviously got a lot of different projects in the go. Standalone multiplayer, Last of Us TV show, and The Last of Us Part 1 remake. Surprisingly, no mention of a Part 2 native PS5 version. Of course, at this point, we do have an upgrade for PS5, but it's not a full PS5 version, you're still playing the PS4 version of the game via backwards compatibility. I could imagine maybe at some point, maybe in line with the release of Part 1 Remake, that they would up it to maybe a full free PS5 upgrade. That does bring us on to the price of Part 1. A little bit surprising, well, a little bit disappointing. I'm not sure that everyone would be super surprised to hear that Sony are charging full price for this. Of course, you're talking about the the third release of a eight, nine year old game now, $70, which is probably going to be around £70 as well. That's a little disappointing, but again, can't be too surprised. And to be honest, I'm going to buy it and I'm sure a lot of other people out there are as well. So let me know, of course, will you be picking up The Last of Us Part 1 Remake? Are you impressed with what you've seen so far or were you going to hold off until you see some gameplay? And of course, you got that standalone multiplayer. What are you thinking? What are you seeing from this concept art that I've maybe missed today? Of course, I'm just having a quick look at it. Let me know down below. And if you like to see more content like this and everything else PlayStation related, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Push Square.